What's going on, Bulls fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bulls Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related. On today's episode, we're going to break down Bleacher Report's top 100 list, also their top 25 bigs list, top 25 wings list, and top 25 guard list, and the Chicago Bulls player listed on those respective lists. We're also going to get into what Bulls player can have a breakout season this upcoming season. And the last we're going to talk about, who does that final two-way spot go to? We're going to go over those players' numbers and the potential candidates. We're going to get into all that and more right after this. You are now tuned in to Chicago Bulls Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bulls news and content. All right, Bulls fans, thank you for joining me. You can be anywhere in the world, but you're here with me on Chicago Bulls Central, and I love you guys. But with that being said, let's get into this team that we love. So Bleacher Report has dropped their top 100 list. They also dropped top 25 list for bigs, wings, and guards. And we had three players listed on the on, on the top 100 list and on the respective list. So as far as the top 100 list, the first player that we had listed was Nikola Vucevic at number 66. Now, he also checked in at number 19th on the top 25 bigs list. And this is, I think, is a fair ranking for Nikola Vucevic. This is all coming into the 22-23 season, considering the down season that Vuce had last season. While a lot of us here at Bulls Nation has seen the improvement in Vuce and does think he's going to have a considerable uptick next season, I can understand his place on this listing. Now, he's not listed towards the bottom. He's listed above uh, some players that I do think he's he's definitely better than. He's, there's a couple of players listed um, below him as well, or sorry, ahead of him that I think he should be above. So as far as below him, we have Paolo Banchero as number 25, which is weird, considering he hasn't played an actual NBA game yet. We got Clint Capella at number 24, Julius Randle at number 23, Al Horford at number 22, Miles Turner at number, nine, uh, at number 21, and then you got uh, Jonas Valanciunas at number 20, and then Nikola Vucevic at number 19. And right above him, you have Jeremy Grant, which is weird. But with that being said, I actually don't hate who he's listed around. Now, Christophe Porzingis is listed as number 17, which I actually think that Vuce is better than Kristaps, just in my opinion. I know he kind of had a bounce back season, but I think that then you have John Collins at number 16. So Vuce, this is a pretty fair ranking towards Nikola Vucevic when you factor in how he played last season. Yes, he's played better in preseason. Uh, it looks very, very good. It looks like something's going to be sustainable in during the season for him. But it's something that, you know, you got to, it's preseason, right? The ca- All the caveats of preseason are thrown out there. So we have to actually see it come to fruition. Him being ranked at number 19. Almost towards the, the the top half of that list. I'm not too I'm not too down on at all. Let me know what you think about Vooch's uh, ranking on that list. Next up, we do have Demar Derozan listed at number uh, 34th overall in the top 100, and he's listed at number 10 um, amongst the the top 25 wings in the league. So again, 34th for Demar seems a bit low for a player that was listed on the All NBA second team. I believe he 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 made it to. So that. Right there. And then on top of that, he was an MVP voting. He had one of the best statistical seasons of his career. I don't really, number 34 on the top 100 list is a little bit mind boggling to me personally. Now, number 10 on the top 25 wing list, I don't necessarily hate it. They do have Chris Mid Middleton listed above him, which I think uh, DeMar DeRozan had a much better season than Middleton last season. Um, But then you have Brandon Ingram, Jalen Brown, Paul George, Jimmy Butler, um, uh, Kawhi Leonard. LeBron James, Jason Tatum, and Kevin Durant all listed above him. So a pretty fair ranking when you talk about amongst the, amongst the wing uh, positions there. So I don't really hate that as far as the wings, but I think number 34 overall in the NBA is a little bit low. Like I said, throwing in all the things and what he achieved last season, I think he should be ranked a little bit above that. But we know DeMar DeRozan is going to have a DeMar DeRozan season. He's the most consistent bull damn near. Uh, we know he's going to come in. He's going to have an over 20 point per game season. So I'm not really hating his ranking. On, on the top 25 wings list, you, like I said, it could be made uh, made an argument for him to be ninth instead of 10th, just swapping with Chris Middleton. But outside of that, I'm not really hating the list too much. Let me know what you guys think on that one down below as well. And then lastly, on the top 100, we have Zach Levine listed at number 27, right, in the top 100, and then listed as, as number 12 on the top 25 guards in the league. So, again, not necessarily hating his ranking um, amongst the top 25 guards, it's weird considering the season that Zach Levine had, which was his first down season compared to the season before it on the Chicago Bulls. Now, we know he was battling injury, things like that. But, like, considering uh, everything going ar- going on around Zach Levine, the fact that he's more healthy, um, the fact that when he even, even in a season where he was injured, he was still 12th in the league in scoring, I believe. So, to have him ranked 
you know, around there as far as guards is a little bit, eh, to me. And, you know, the fact that he ranked so high and he was seven spots above DeMar DeRozan, who had a better season. Like, we, we know reasons, but he did have a better season than Zach Levine when you look at the totality of it. It's like, uh, okay, okay, well, we'll see, we'll see. Now, the players listed above Zach Levine with this, again, uh, on the guard list, Anthony Edwards uh, listed at number 11, Bradley Bill number 10, Kyrie Irving number 9, Donovan Mitchell number 8, uh, James Harden number 7, Dame Lillard number 6, uh, Booker comes in at number 5, we have Trey Young at number 4, John Moran at number 3, Steph Curry at number 2, and Luka Doncic at number 1. Now, on this guards list, the players that I think that Zach Levine is clearly better than and is going to have a better season, I think Zach Levine's a better pe player than Donovan Mitchell. I know that may not be a popular opinion, but that is one that I think. And I do think that at, as of right now, I think Zach Levine is kind of better than Bradley Bill as well. They're very similar players, though. Him and Anthony Edwards, I think both could have been ranked a little bit higher. You guys know I'm hugely high on Anthony Edwards. Um, I think he can he has best player in the league type potential at some point. Um, but, you know, with that being said, that's the list. So what does that mean? The Bulls have three players listed in the top 100 for the Chicago Bulls. And so what what bothers me about this is that all the the doubt around the Chicago Bulls, right? All the doubt surrounding the Chicago Bulls, um, specifically like on their on their on their playoff seating where they're going to be you know some people have the bulls uh as a playing team and i understand that you know with 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 just how some people rank the moves that the other teams have made but you know the bulls have it all has to be it's all going to be told on the court i should say everything is going to be told on the court how they come together is going to be the key thing and i do think that this is a team when you bet on continuity so far how they looked in preseason the continuity bet is paying off a bit and that 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 new look offense for the Chicago Bulls is going to be the biggest key in that the efficiency that they play what is going to be the biggest key how do they go away from isolation ball this team you know all these rankings and things what do they really matter when the lights turn on in the grand scheme of things nothing they mean nothing when the lights turn on but it's interesting to see where the players rank in that and how they're perceived by some of these outlets because hey it gives us notice of kind of where the Bulls um are viewed at being at but we know that a lot of a lot of uh, outlets have the Bulls ranked as a playing team. You have some that even think the Bulls are going to be 12th in the East, which I don't understand at all, especially when you have uh, three of the top 100 players in the league. But it's all going to come to fruition. We're all going to see how this team plays. And as I've been saying all week, the preseason play of the Chicago Bulls has left me very excited about the style of play. Let's hope that that comes together. Now, let's move into the next topic, and that is Bulls players that have the potential, the highest potential to break out next season, right? We already know Javante Green is definitely one that's on that list. Um, with his play, whether he's coming, whether he's starting or coming off the bench, it's going to be it's going to be interesting to see how it all shakes out, right? It's going to be interesting to see if Javante Green's the level of efficiency that he had. No, we do not expect that level of efficiency to stay because that that would be shooting seventy percent from the field, be one all the all one of the all time best shooting percentages of if NBA history. I think the best actual is, is DeAndre Jordan at like 61% or something like that. So we know that that's not going to stick. But when you look at the way that he plays, the activity level that he moves with, um, he's definitely poised to have a breakout season for the Chicago Bulls. And I think when you look at a player that was, that was the throw-in in the trade that brought him to Chicago and him being the player that now we're talking about potentially having a breakout season, um, it definitely is definitely potential for that. Now, I listed him first and just said him first because i know going into a list of players that could break out most people are immediately going to go to uh to uh javante green and that's understandable considering his preseason play io de sumo is another one we talked about this over on locked on bulls today and pat the designer picked io de sumo he said that he thinks that io de sumo can have a 15 point per game season um and and and, and just increase and when you look at like io improving his body shooting 52 percent from the field um and just the efficiency him and the shots that he passed up at times in games last season if he starts taking those confidently works better in the flow of the offense we've seen that now that with the bulls working from the from the inside out with nikola vucevic doing and using utilizing his passing a little bit more a player with io's slashing ability and ability to shoot that we didn't haven't really seen a ton in his nba career so far um it's it's it, it, it's definitely a chance that io could see a huge uptick he's coming in as a starting point guard he won that position um he shot the ball 52 percent from the field and 37 percent from outside last season so with a higher uptick even though those percentages drop a little bit or god forbid he's able to keep those the same i would assume was poised to have a really big season for the chicago bulls but my pick on having a breakout season for 
uh, the Chicago Bulls is going to be Alice Caruso. And I know that that's surprising. I know that when you look at the way that he's played in, in preseason, he, the numbers really don't pop out at you. But when you, it's a couple of things that I'm factoring into this when I pick um, Alice Caruso to have the breakout season for the Chicago Bulls. I'm looking at his defense, which we already know is going to be amazing. He's going to be consistent. Uh, he's going to get turnovers for the team. He's going to get out in transition. But now when you look at Alex Caruso being out there with 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 other great passers. You have Goran Dragic who's going to be out there who's going to be able to find Alex Caruso. You have Andre Drummond who's going to get more possessions and he's a better passer than what people have 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 um have thought that he's been over the course of his of his career and Billy Donovan has talked about using Drummond as a facilitator. And then when you look at if he does end up playing with Dalen Terry, if Dalen Terry does get in the minutes, Dalen Terry's playmaking Alex Caruso is one of our best off the ball players already. He was one of the best last season, even though the scoring output wasn't um, what you would what you would think that it could have been with him. He had a down season shooting three point range. Now, always with Alex Caruso, he has a season shooting thirty percent, and then it goes up to forty percent the next season. So he's poised to have, if those trends hold true, a forty percent shooting from the field. But when you look at the ball movement um, that the Bulls have now worked into their offense, when you look at the fact that with this bench unit that could be another bench mob, one of the things that's going to benefit them is getting out in transition. Uh, 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 passing the ball, um, the the player movement off the ball, and w- with having the ball, all of those things benefit Alice Caruso. And then when you when you add in his brand of defense, Alice Caruso could very well land on an all defensive team this season. And on the top on top of that, we could see Alice Caruso have the biggest scoring output of his career. Listen, in Alice Caruso's career, the most points he's ever averaged per game was his second season with the Los Angeles Lakers at 9.2, in that he only had 21 minutes per game. With the Bulls last season, he averaged 28 minutes per game. He started 18. He played in 41 games. Now, he only averaged 7.4 points for the Chicago Bulls in that, but when you look at all the other improvements as this team's make, I think that Alice Caruso can have the defensive performance to make an all-defensive team, and he can have now the offensive performance in the style of play, getting out in transition. We already know he's a great leaper. I think Alice Caruso is poised for a breakout season statistically. So that's my pick there. Other candidates include Kobe White, Patrick Williams, of course. A lot to say if Patrick Williams does have a breakout season, how that could extend and, and uptick the, the Chicago Bulls standings in the in an improved Eastern Conference. But that's my pick for it. Let me know down below who is your pick for the breakout uh, uh, or players to have a breakout season for the Chicago Bulls this season. Again, by breakout, it's all, it's all dependent upon, like, right, it's, it's conditional upon the, the player, right? Every a breakout is different for every player. For example, Kobe White being more consistent and only upticking his points probably from 12 to 15 coming off the bench, that's almost a breakout season because of the consistency and the defense and the other things that he's showing on the court. Alice Caruso, scoring uptick, keeping his brand in defense, that's a breakout. So by breakout, I don't necessarily mean the next player to have a 20, 22 point per game season. I mean, as far as like really settling into the role and having a bigger impact then maybe what we can have and maybe in a different way than what we'd expect as well. Andre Drummond may be one of the candidates for that as well. But lastly, before we end the show today, I want to talk about that last two-way player contract. And this could come out as early as today. I could drop this episode and this all could be null and void. But we know it's really between three players. It's us, Costas Antetokounmpo, Carla Jones, and Malcolm Hill. When you look at the preseason numbers for these three players, Antetokounmpo played 11 minutes. He had four rebounds, five assists, one, uh, one assist, three turnovers um, in that time. Right? Carla Jones, 23 minutes, four points, two rebounds, seven assists, two steals, only one turnover. That's actually a really good play. Carla Jones is definitely going to be on the G League team, by the way. And then you have Malcolm Hill. Malcolm Hill, 13 minutes, 13 points, three rebounds, uh, one assist. He was five for 10 from the field, two for six from three point range. And when you look at this, right, the fact that Malcolm Hill had way less minutes than Carla Jones, only two, two more minutes than Costa Santa de Cupo, but the, the numbers as far as the scoring, are, are drastically different. When it comes to the last two-way contract for the Chicago Bulls, one could say it's based off what we need. And that need could be a big man in Costa Santos de Cupo. Could very well be that. Especially when you look at maybe the Bulls cut Tony Bradley. Then do what do they bring in there? Carla Jones, I just don't see it for him because he's a guard. That's our deepest position. I don't think we have a need for him. And then you have Malcolm Hill, the player that can play the three or the four. But again, some overlap with him, Dalen Terry, Derek Jones Jr., Javante Green, they're all like these players that are going to play multiple positions for the Chicago Bulls, but that may be a reason why he keeps that two-way contract is because of the versatility and his and his ability to already know the system and shoot the three ball. I think it's going to come down to Malcolm Hill getting that last two-way contract, which he already signed, signed that qualifying offer. But 
I think the other two players are still going to be on the Chicago Bulls G League affiliate. Now, with that being said, a player that we all wanted to see stay in the system that end up going elsewhere and McCore Maker ended up getting waived by the Washington Wizards. So the question that I present to you guys, while we're talking about these three players to get that last two-way deal, would you be interested in bringing McCore Maker back? Instead, McCore Maker, who flashed passing, shooting, everything that we want to see from a modern-day big man, he flashed that. And if you're looking at this two-way contract as a player that probably isn't going to play a lot of NBA games, what if this team stays healthy, but you're, you're looking at developing and maybe bringing into the roster next season, or if there is an injury, bring it up. I like the concept of possibly bringing back McCore Maker, in my opinion. You guys let me know what you think about that one down below, or if you're on the podcast side, I'll tell you how to get those thoughts and ideas into me. But that is it for today's episode of Chicago Bulls Central. Make sure you're following the show at Bulls Central Pod. You can send us any feedback, questions, comments, concerns. BullsCentralPod at gmail.com. Lastly, if you want to leave a text and or voicemail to get your thoughts in, the number to do so, 773-270-2799. We are the number one spot for everything Chicago Bulls related because of you guys. And like I like to end every episode on, go Bulls. Love you guys. Peace, y'all. This has been a presentation of The Break Break Media. Media.